You're welcome back to my platform. I'm Cyrus. Be sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell for more of my content. So I went out on a survey this past Saturday to collect data to make my own predictions for Ghana's coming presidential elections. Ladies and gentlemen, it was super hectic, but satisfying. And I'll need you to stay on throughout this episode to understand the whole process and my prediction. First of all, I needed to settle on a location where I will get in contact with the people from all walks of life at different stages in life. I wanted a blend of students and the unemployed, the market women and men, corporate people and the elderly. And so I chose La Paz, a central location within Accra where it's accessible to people and route to the southern part of the country or to the western part of the country, to the central, to the Ashanti region, eastern region and also to the Volta region of Ghana. It was a mixture of people from every religious and ethnic background. So my team and I started at 10 a.m. on a journey to interview 1,000 registered voters on a simple, straightforward question. Who are you voting for in December's election? We chose not to ask for people's names and their reasons for their choices. The reason is simple. Everyone definitely has a reason to vote for one person or the other. Even if you think that others' reasons aren't sound, your vote is one. As a managing director, it's just one. And their vote is equally one, even if they are unemployed. So it was simple, straightforward. Who are you voting for in the next elections? The expected response were as follows. The name of the candidate, which is option one. Option two was, no, I won't vote. And option three was, silence. Or, I don't want to share it. These are some of the videos of the exercise. Let's take a quick look and return for the breakdown of the outcome. Hey, I'll attach you. Let me ask you. Driver, who did they vote for? Driver, one out of our man. Chairman, who did they vote for this year? Check that. Thank you. Write it down. Who did they vote for this year? Huh? Who did they vote for? Then I voted. One number two, Ababa. Wait till the vote. You know the vote. Wait till the vote. Vote, 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 vote. Ah, vote, election, vote, election, election, vote. Money they said. Ah. <laughs> you go pay. Another day, I they find out who you go vote for. I mean, if I vote, they go pay me. There no problem. So the one way go pay you. Me, I go vote for. I hear you. Thank you. I hear you. I feel one out to Ababa. I feel one out to Ababa. No, according to Omo, we na we any day. Um, we find one of the police who are the police. I am the police. I am the police. I am the police. I am the the police. I am the police. I the the thank you for choosing to stay with us throughout the video now these are the scores as gathered after more than four hours of walking and asking same question to the people in the streets and on the buses this is the compiled figures ladies and gentlemen starting from the bottom up remember there are 13 presidential candidates going into ghana's elections 
on 7 december so let's take it from the bottom up in accordance with their performance in the survey and not by their position on the ballot paper the liberal party of ghana led by akpalu got zero apc Ayariga got zero the new vision movement by kofi kranten got zero ladies and gentlemen george chum berima edu scored zero nana akosuya frempoma of the cpp scored zero Mohamed Frimpon of the NDP scored zero. And Daniel Augustus Latte Jr. of GCPP also scored zero. The following are the candidates who actually scored votes, starting from the bottom to the top. Alan Tremantin, out of 1,000 votes, scored six votes. Christian Kwabina Andrews of Ghana Union Movement scored eight votes. Okuya Donko, the deceased of GFP, scored 27 votes. Nana Kwame Bediako of the New Force scored 150 votes out of the 1,000 votes. Dr. Mahamudu Baumia of the New Patriotic Party scored 198 votes. And John Dramani Mahama of the NDC Party scored 299 votes out of the 1,000 votes. There was a huge surprise in the data collection process, ladies and gentlemen. You realize that when you put all the numbers together, it doesn't add up to the 1,000. Let's do it. 6 plus 8 plus 27 plus 150, 198, 299 gives you 688 votes. That leaves an outstanding 312 votes, ladies and gentlemen. The 312 votes represent people who stated categorically that they will not vote. And therefore, in percentage wise, Alan scored 0.6%. Goom scored 0.8%. The deceased, the Kyadonko, scored 2.7%. Nana Kwame Bediako scored 15%. Dr. Baumia scored 19.8%. And John Dramani Mahama scored 29.9%. And the people who won't vote scored 31.2%. Ladies and gentlemen, there is hope for those who are on the side of the new force. And I'm saying it again. And here is why. The people who won't vote spoke with surety and anger why they will not vote without being asked. They would say there is no need for them to queue up and vote because that won't bring any improvement to their financial situation. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the people that are going to make the difference in the coming elections and determine who the winner will be thereof. The sheer size of disgruntled and uninterested voters in Ghana is bigger than the percentage of people who are waiting to vote for any particular party. This is quite similar to the data from other reputable research works that reported that, that the number of floating voters in Ghana are more than the number of any one political party. It is therefore prudent to say it is from this pool the winner will be crowned. The NDC appears to lead in most projections across the country, but their number isn't as far distanced from the MPP and the New Force Movement. The New Force Movement, however, is pretty close to catching up to the NPP in places like Accra, Central Region, and Western Region. But there is so much work to be done, and I advise you to get out, whether on your phones or on social media or to individual people, and contribute your quota to the coming change. I'm not predicting Nana Kwame Bidia who will win, but I'm expecting there to be a runoff. And by the way, I'm running another online survey for the presidential elections on Trends Hub. You have to sign up for free and participate in the survey on my platform on Tuntun Network on TrendsHub.live. I, however, have a challenge. My challenge, ladies and gentlemen, is that our electoral constitution on runoffs are totally biased and not reflecting the true stance of voters. I say this because should Nanakwame get even 10% of the votes, he will be exempted from the runoffs, which will disenfranchise his millions of voters from voting. 
this forces parties to go into collisions with the two main parties which literally means nothing in terms of governance but everything when it comes to contracts and some appointment i believe that encourages corruption i believe our electoral laws should be restructured to accommodate any party or movement that makes 10 percent of the first round votes to run in the second round 10 percent of 70 million voters is 1.7 million people for your information this number cannot be overlooked in a second round elections i disagree with that absolutely and in conclusion i'll say this to the new force movement followers this survey has made me aware of the reality of senior citizens who are in total support of the movement and the personality of Nana Kwame Bediakon and will prefer to keep quiet until the day of the elections. So I'll tell you this today. If you don't give up, special things will come your way. Thanks for watching today's video. Be kind to subscribe and click on the notification bell for more of my content. I'll come your way with another one soon and we shall do another survey in a different location. God bless you. God bless Ghana and it's bye-bye for now.